Good Sunday morning. Today on Perspectives, they are part of our environment. Fellow residents, or should I say inhabitants, invisible to us most of the time until unexpectedly our paths cross and collide. Now, there were 10 fox attacks reported in Baldwin County last year. Of that number, five of those animals tested positive for rabies. Now, not all of the foxes who attacked folks in Baldwin County were caught. Fortunately, Mobile County is yet to report a fox attack or rabbit animals. But people who live in the city have another big concern, coyotes. City leaders responded quickly after reports of coyotes killing pets two years ago. City crews placed traps in neighborhoods, but the coyotes, they are very smart. Now, only one was caught in the Yester Oaks neighborhood off of Airport Boulevard. Now take a look at this information from the Alabama Department of Public Health. Last year, Baldwin County led the state in the number of reported rabbit animals. Five foxes tested positive for rabies with three raccoons also testing positive. Now the rest of the state didn't report as high a number. The second highest report of rabbit animals came from Pike County in southeast Alabama. They reported four rabbit raccoons in 2018. Last month in Baldwin County, a report of another fox attack, but this time, though, the animal could not be tested for rabies. Fox 10 News Baldwin County reporter Hal Shurick filed this report. It was yesterday afternoon when the homeowner here tells me her small dog was attacked by a fox in her driveway. She was able to fight it off with her cane and take the dog to the vet. While she was gone is when her friend was attacked when the fox ran out from under her car and began biting her. It happened at the rear of a home on Country Woods Drive. The driveway backs up to a wooded area and the car was parked nearby. The homeowner didn't want to go on camera but described the attack on her friend as vicious. Other neighbors heard about it quickly. I received messages from several friends around town, really, and then just in the neighborhood, too, just kind of putting us on alert, letting us know how, you know, it was close to home. Valerie Pittman has children and pets and was surprised to hear what had happened. Fairhill police say the victim was attacked when walking to her vehicle. She was bitten on the hand and had multiple scrapes from falling on the driveway. This is the first reported fox attack in Baldwin County this year. Last year there were 10, but the first one wasn't until May 21st. From then through October 5th, eight people and two dogs were attacked. In all cases where the foxes were caught, they tested positive for rabies. Neighbors in Country Woods are concerned about the incident and are taking extra precautions. I definitely will be, especially in the evenings. You know, I think at night more than anything. During the day, I don't feel as um, exposed, perhaps, but at night, I am certainly not going to just come out by myself or let the dogs out by themselves. Report just last month. That was March of 2019, of course, Hal following that report. So you see, the wildlife is among us. Joining us today, Mark Bryant of the Mobile County Health Department and Mary Ann Hudson, a conservation outreach specialist with the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We will talk with them about wildlife in our midst in just a moment. Also throughout the program this morning, you'll hear from two wildlife experts who have been called out to Baldwin County neighborhoods after reports of wild and rabbit animals. Now they are share with us their experiences and concerns. JJ McCool of Wildlife Solutions takes us to the break, sharing why if we see a fox or a coyote, we need to leave it alone. We're hearing more about it now and yes, be more concerned. I was when there was a single incident, I was not that concerned as a parent, as a resident of Baldwin County. Yes, I'm, I'm concerned about it. If I've you know, told my kids number of times before, sometimes we would handle raccoons and we catch them, not anymore. And if, if you see a fox or see a wild animal, you know, don't go up your cell phone, go trying to take pictures, just stay away from it, leave it alone. We have a lot of good habitat for gray foxes in the area. Uh, particularly because we have a lot of shrubbery that produces fruit. We have a lot of pet foods sitting out, you know, and, and also people feed feral cats or stray cats. Uh, you know, you're gonna have competition over that food, bickering, fighting. We feel like that's an, another big contributor to the spread of rabies in the area. That's Mike Niemeyer with Wildlife Solutions as well. Now here this morning to shed more light on rabies as well as the wildlife that are carriers, Mark Bryan of the Mobile County Health Department 
And Marianne Hudson, a conservation outreach specialist again with the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We thank you both for joining us this morning. Glad to be here. When you hear these reports, Marianne, there in Montgomery at the state office, what are you thinking about what's happening down here in South Alabama? Well, statewide, it's important for the members of the public to know that they need to take every effort necessary to avoid contact with wildlife for any reason. And a large part of those reasons is disease transmission. Rabies is a very serious disease. It's fatal in wildlife and fatal in humans as well. When you look at the numbers, are we seeing more now or just more being reported? How is that working? Well, it's a combination of things. You know, rabies is a contagious disease. So when one animal has rabies, as it nears the end of its life, it mm. spreads that virus, sometimes by acting aggressively and biting another animal and spreading that disease. And as that continues, more and more animals can have the disease. Also, some of these animals commonly live in close habitation to humans. Some of them are even acclimated to come into our yards and eat the cat food that we leave about. And so when these animals are already used to being around people and then are infected by a contagious disease, problems occur. Mark, in the Mobile County Health Department, what are you hearing as it relates to wildlife and the contacts that we're hearing happening in both Baldwin County yeah. and Mobile County? Yeah, um, fortunately, Mobile has not had the same problems. Uh, we hear different reasons why. Maybe it's more the uh, home homeowners, uh, I mean the creation of new homes mm -hmm. in Baldwin County, the subdivisions, uh, maybe forcing the animals out of their natural habitat. But uh, we've just been very fortunate in Mobile County. We haven't had any reports, um, but we are always pushing the, for uh, the cats, the dogs, uh, the ferrets, getting their rabies shots. That's you know one of our main concerns when we have the local uh, facilities each Saturday uh, to give the rabies clinics uh, to make sure for those animals that are in closer. They're not the wildlife, but again, rabies in any form, you know, it's important to us. Now, of course, you have had the reports of coyotes being seen and right. uh, even, I guess, some of them uh, killing the smaller pets. Right. And, you know, again, um, it's, it's the report. Um, we have to turn that over to the animal control, uh, either the city or the county. You know, they do a great job with, you know, helping control that. But it's, it's like uh, Marianne was saying, you know, just trying to stay away from them. Uh, even uh, with cats or dogs, you just don't know uh, if it's out in the wild. You don't know if it's a possibility for rabies. Sometimes it's just just stay away from it. And we talk about the development that's taking place. There is a lot of new development, right. as Mark was mentioning, in Baldwin County. And I guess uh, when you talk about the size of the county as well, it's the largest county in the state. So is that sort of the transitioning that's taking place now where uh, areas that were once rural and, of course, some forestry, now becoming subdivisions? Well, it's a combination of factors. Some of these wildlife species actually thrive in close contact with humans because where there are humans, there's a, a breakup in the habitat and that leads to a lot of their prey animals. Foxes, for example, eating the chipmunks, eating the squirrels, eating the mice and rats that live near our homes. So in some ways, we're taking away from their natural homes, but we're also giving them food source. And as I mentioned before, people leaving food out for feral cats or leaving their pet food out overnight, those types of things are going to attract these animals. And also inadvertently, people can add to the spread of this disease by relocating wildlife. And that's something they need to make sure they do not do. If a landowner is having a problem with a raccoon getting in their trash mm -hmm. or a fox tunneling up under their deck, many landowners don't want to hurt the animal and they live trap it and then haul it off to grandpa's mm -hmm. farm in the next county. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to the spread of disease. And that's right. not a good idea. Not a good idea. Now, is that happening in what you're hearing? some stories of people relocating stuff in Mobile? No, but we, I have heard of that, but again, you know, it's n not a very smart thing to do because they're actually a potential of being, you know, scratched or bitten That's right. uh, during the mm -hmm. trying to trap them. So the, the human can get injured while accomplishing that task. Also, the animal may be diseased and they may not know it. And so in addition to that, it's also illegal to, to transport okay. these rabies mm -hmm. vectors across county lines and across water bo bodies of water. And so it's definitely something we want to make sure people aren't doing for public safety health reasons and also the health of the wildlife population as well. So if they happen to be trapping something that's in their yard, mm -hmm. oh, say a raccoon or a fox or a coyote, once they have uh, captured it in a trap, mm -hmm. immediately report it. That's right. They can contact us and we can either assist them or get them in contact with some permitted nuisance wildlife control operators on the proper disposition of that animal. 
When you look at what's happening in Baldwin County and being so close proximity to Mobile County, and then you also have Escambia County, Alabama, is there a concern of the foxes moving out into these counties or? Well, yeah, absolutely. Rabies is a concern statewide and actually worldwide. You know, in the United States, we've been kind of insulated because we have a heavy public health initiative and vaccination programs, but worldwide people die from rabies every day. Many people die every day around the world. Mm -hmm. Here in this country, it's not so much, and we want to continue that trend and help drop the level of infection, especially in people, but also in wildlife. But since they spread it from species to species and animal to animal, absolutely there's concerns about it spreading to other counties because obviously the animals don't follow those, those boundaries. Is there anything that can be done in Mobile County to prepare for not allowing the no way not to allow it, but to prepare just in case if uh, we see things happening. I guess I mean, the causeway area is our connecting right. point there. Uh, again, like uh, Mary was saying, you know, leaving out the food uh, for the animals, th th this is going to attract them. Uh, we have that same issue with our vector control we, with mosquitoes and rodents. That's one of the issues we discussed, you know, with uh, the rodent control, very similar, mm -hmm. just not having uh, the availability for food. Because um, they're very likely, if there's no food there for them, they're going to have to move. So it's uh, just the number one tip uh, is try to control the uh, area around your homes uh, for those issues. That's an interesting point because a lot of people, when they see cats and that type of thing, they will try and feed the cats in many cases mm -hmm. and leaving food out. So that's a point that we'll be sharing throughout the program this morning. Now, Mike Nehemiah of Wildlife Solutions takes us to the break this morning with some things that we can do in our home area. In fact, things that both Mary Ann and Mark have mentioned to make our area around the homes less attractive to wildlife. Don't leave pet foods out. And that's just a natural attraction. Mean, they're, they're not going to be able to avoid coming to, to a free food source, especially something that's being pretty much hand delivered daily. Um, second off is keep your, keep your hedges trimmed if you can. Uh, fruit producing bushes, be good to maybe pick up that fruit, not leave it laying in the yard. That's a natural attractant. Fruit's a big, is a big uh, attractant to a lot of rabies vectors. urban setting or something that people out west even in Los Angeles San Antonio areas like that have dealt with for years because the, these animals are, are, are very smart and it's just like the city boy and the country boy and the coyotes and animals that learn to come to the city and live they've learned how to how to use that to their advantage they move under the cover of darkness but you can look on the internet and see many videos of urban coyotes they they know the food sources they learn the sound of the trucks they're able to cross the roads they learn about traffic and they pass on to their offspring. If a coyote does move into an urban area and he starts eating a few pets and starts living there or eating garbage, he's probably not going to leave. And he's also, they're going to raise their offspring there and teach their offspring the same thing. And here this morning to talk more about that, Mark Bryan of the Mobile County Health Department and Marianne Hudson, a conservation outreach specialist with the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. And we think of smart, uh, foxes being very smart, but as we heard there, coyotes are also very sharp as well as it relates to understanding the environment and uh, how to adapt to it. And one of the questions that uh, people wonder sometimes, are, are the coyotes uh, migratory or as we're hearing there, once they've got a area where they feel comfortable, they will stay. As long as they're finding all of their needs met, they're going to typically stay in an area. They're going to find all the food they need, then they're going to stay there. If they find the shelter they need, they're going to stay there and raise their families. They do some wandering and roaming during breeding season, but for the most part, if they have a place to find their food and raise their young, they're going to stick around. And we want them to be finding that food in the woods, not on our front right. porches, not on our decks, and not in our trash cans. And again, people can take steps to discourage those attractants by keeping their area tidy, pet foods inside, trash cans clean. I don't just mean clean, I mean void of smells as well. So okay. making sure your trash can is not attracting wildlife. If it's going to attract a stray dog, it's going to attract a raccoon, it's going to attract a fox, it's going to attract a coyote. So there's a cleaning process that we need to be a part of. That's as well right. And that can help 
homeowners take some responsibility in making sure this wildlife is discouraged from coming onto their property. Now we talked about the bites uh, from the fox attacks in Baldwin County, but Mark, also we're dealing with wildlife bites in Mobile County, but not necessarily the, the foxes. Right, you know, it's it's mostly going to be uh, dogs and cats. That's the most issues. Uh, and I was just looking back last year, uh, we, we keep an, a number for the animal bites that are reported to us, and there were 579 cases uh, that the Mobile County Health Department investigated, and those involve, you know, the possibility, are there rabies uh, involved uh, with that? And if they are, the animals have to be quarantined uh, for certain, I think it's 10 days uh, to make sure uh, they're not if they can be captured and identified uh, but just in March uh, they've investigated uh, 62 cases uh, which is higher than last year's monthly average so you just never really know it's, it, it's reaction you have to be prepared for it mm -hmm. but then every case that comes in has to be investigated to make sure you know the, about the rabies being um, followed on the animals so are we looking at a seasonal concern for rabies or can this be year-round now well, this time of year, in the spring and summer, we have a lot of issues with people finding young wildlife, young raccoons, young foxes that they feel are in need of help. And unfortunately, sometimes diseases come in, in cute little packages. Mm -hmm. And just because a raccoon or a fox is young does not mean that it is disease-free. Even baby animals can have rabies. Quite often, people pick up these baby animals, pass them around. We've even had reports of them allowing them to take their kids to take these animals to schools. Oh my and unfortunately, that can be a very risky thing to do. We had a case a few years ago here in Alabama of a litter of four baby raccoons that was taken out of the wild, mm -hmm. spread to four different homes and four different families. And one of the baby raccoons started acting ill and did test positive for rabies. And over 20 people had to receive their vaccinations, their post-exposure vaccinations due to that. So if you see a baby animal, which is very likely this time of year, leave it alone. Don't pick it up. And not necessarily is it going to be an aggressive behavior. Some rabbit animals act very tame, some act very timid. And just because you see an animal that's not acting sick doesn't mean it's not diseased. And because sometimes these diseases stay hidden for a long time and never show outward symptoms. So if you see a baby animal, it's best to just leave it alone and tell your children the same thing and make sure they're not afraid to tell you if they did touch one of these animals and then seek your health care provider's advice and the health department's advice if you've had potential exposure. So when you talk about the baby animals, we're talking about how young? Because I think most people are thinking that an older animal gets rabies, but how does it happen to uh, a smaller newborn? Well, rabies is spread through direct contact from animal to animal. And so if a parent animal has rabies, just sometimes the action of grooming, licking, okay. mucous membrane contact between those animals. Also, these animals act aggressively and erratically at times. So they may snap at a youngster, spread the virus, and then the, but not actually kill the youngster. And so these animals can catch rabies through mucous membrane contact with another rabbit animal and also through a break in the skin. My goodness, so at a very young age, that Even can happen with mom doing the grooming, as That's you mentioned. Right. Mm -hmm. Mark, one of the things when we talked about uh, the rabies, it is a very serious concern if you are bitten or scratched. Yes, uh, I mean, like I said, it can be fatal. Uh, and and to get the shots, it's, it's pretty unpleasant, uh, uh, the treatment for that. So anything you can do to avoid, you know, at the mission for the health department is uh, to protect uh, improve and uh, promote the health of Mobile County and this is just one of the many issues you know that we and we have like I said, we have a department that focuses just on uh, rabies control uh, like I said in our case it's usually more the dogs cats mm -hmm. and ferrets which we do but you know we have to be ready because uh, just because it's in Baldwin County. Uh, we have to be ready, to, you know, to, for an attack to take place mm -hmm. here. And you still have a lot of rural area in Mobile County Definitely. and uh, communities that are out there in that area too. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about that and definitely how to make sure that we are educating our children mm -hmm. to be aware of the cute wildlife yeah. that they're seeing outside. Well, we'll come back and talk more about that. We're going to leave you with this as we go to the break, talking about the concerns now. They're at a higher level than ever before, according to J.J. McCool with Wildlife Solutions. This is very rare, okay? I mean, I went through my entire career over 20 years and never ran into rabies except once in South Texas, so it's very odd. 
but it's very dangerous. It's one of the first things we, we learned about when we were in school. Very important, if you're, if you're bitten or scratched by, by an animal and you don't know that it's a wild animal or it's a dog that you don't know, maybe a stray dog, go and get checked out immediately. By the time you, you, it's, it goes to the incubation period, incubation period and it gets into your work, you're, you're showing symptoms, it's too late. It's 100% fatal once it reaches your nervous system. Go get it checked out, get vaccinated. Also, people, please vaccinate your pets. That's why in the United States we have such a low incidence of rabies. It's because of that. Countries that don't have astronomical figures. There's like 60,000 people a year worldwide die of rabies. way to protect your pets for, from coyotes, a fence is a great protection and you want that fence to go all the way to the ground And two reasons. Most of the time they're not going to come over a fence to go in, they're going to try to go under. If they do come under your fence to come in from your backyard to get your pet, food, investigating, if you, it's easy for someone like us to find that area to trap that animal easily. The other thing is that your pets are a double-edged sword, although they may be, be attracted to little Fifi to come eat it. If you have Bruiser, the little bit bigger dog, that's another way to keep them away. Again, J.J. McCool of Wildlife Solutions with some tips on dealing with coyotes. If you happen to be in Mobile County or really anywhere throughout the state, it can be an issue. Talking as we close out again with Mark Bryant and Marianne Hudson. So, Mark, you heard the points there about the dogs yeah. being a concern because of the interaction with the coyotes. Reminder of what people should be doing with their pets. Yes, uh, we uh, state mandates that we offer low cost vaccinations, uh, rabies clinics. Uh, we do it every Saturday throughout the year. You can go to our website, mchd.org, or our Facebook page, I Love MCHD. Uh, we keep that updated there. And uh, also, uh, Barbara Gibbs, who's in charge of our rabies control, recently did uh, a very nice uh, video about rabies control, uh, which you can follow up from this program. And it's again, at our YouTube a channel again is I love MCHD right. and we'll be showing the phone numbers of contact also and and Marianne again the importance of teaching your children about dealing with wild animals that's right wild animals are, are very numerous some of them live very comfortably in close contact with humans but we want to make sure that contact is not actual physical contact and so in the summertime when the young foxes and the young coyotes are out you may even see them during the day that doesn't necessarily mean they are ill but it always is important that you do not touch them even if they appear healthy don't touch any wild animals we thank you both for joining us today to share the information due to now March happening and we had our first attack and of course throughout the year we are concerned especially with this time of the year we've got some uh, numbers to give you for more information you can contact the Mobile County Health Department as well there's a number to call along with the Alabama Department of Public Health and the Wildlife and Freshwater Fisheries Division for the state of Alabama Definitely uh, call and get the information you need to make sure that you and your family are safe. We thank you for joining us here on Perspectives on this Sunday morning. Don't forget every Sunday morning at 730 we're here as we discuss those important issues and seek solutions. Now, if you have ideas of topics you'd like for us to address, just drop it to us here at Perspectives at Fox10TV.com. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week. Good information. <laughs>